Ladies and gentlemen, our special guest today is Mr. Gordon Treadgold. He's been recognized by Global <coughs> Gurus as a top 10 leadership expert and speaker. He's a highly sought after keynote speaker on leadership, employee engagement and operational excellence. He's a huge cricket fan and a former rugby player himself. Gordon's work has been featured in the Forbes magazine, Business Insider, Inc. magazine and other leading publications. He's written four books and his last book, Fast, was a finalist in the Chartered Management Institute Management Book of the Year. In his highly successful corporate career, Gordon has led global teams of 1,000 plus staff across the world and managed $100 million plus projects. His LinkedIn tagline says, I help good managers develop into great leaders. And that will be the subject of our discussion today, how we can all tap into the leadership potential. Um, if there is IQ and EQ and social quotient, there's, we've got to have an LQ as well, a leadership quotient. We all have these inherent leadership qualities inside us and today our objective would be to simplify um, some of the leadership principles for you because there's tons of literature out there there are hundreds of books released every year there's so many trends transformational leadership and this leadership and that leadership we'll try to simplify it for you as always since we have the privilege of having these uh, different experts from across the world, different subject matter experts, I encourage my audience to have a pen and paper handy, take down notes, distill this 30, 40 minute conversation into a few actionable steps and implement it. It's not until you implement some of the things that we talk about that you will actually see the results. So once again, please join me in welcoming Mr. Gordon Treadgold. Thank you. Gordon, you're welcome to the show. Thank you so much for your for your time. We appreciate that, and um, I respect the bo your body of work, your, the work that you've done around the subject of leadership. And um, what, why don't we begin this discussion by asking you what drew you to the subject, uh, to this niche of uh, leadership training? So, the the thing for me about leadership is that. I, I was actually promoted into a leadership position without mm -hmm. really, because of the results I was generating, I was I was very good at understanding how to get results. And a lot of time it was because of my technical capability. Right. Um, and it was whilst I was doing that, and also earlier whilst I'd been playing sport, but the penny mm -hmm. didn't drop at that time. And mm -hmm. the reason is that leadership is just the difference between success and failure. Mm -hmm. and this is why it's important to me and, and as somebody who's uh, super competitive you know wanting to be successful was right. always important and then i wanted to just learn more and more about that and mm -hmm. i got to uh, and i was put into positions where i was technically gifted mm -hmm. to uh, and could help solve it but then was given other positions and or brought into other projects where i didn't have the technical skills and, and what mm -hmm. i found was that you know, when you look at it objectively, it, it's all about the people and putting them in a position to be successful, right. which is leadership. And it mm -hmm. was it was failures of leadership. You know, SAP implementations don't fail because SAP doesn't work. Right. You know, organizational changes don't uh, fail because um, the the idea is a bad idea. The, these things are just poorly led. And mm -hmm. leadership is the difference between success and failure, and that's why I've kind of been uh, you know, obsessed with it. It's probably the uh, mm -hmm. an understatement, right? I mean, no, you, I you look at it. You look at it in terms of cricket, and uh, there's there's some great teams around the, the world. Mm -hmm. but, you sure. know, but India, India under Dhoni's leadership was mm -hmm. the best team in the world. Right? Did they have the best players? You could probably argue that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was Donny's leadership mm -hmm. that, that was the thing that took them from being a good team to being a great team. Uh, that's and a great example, at, right? That's a great example. And I, I, I completely agree. It's not always about having all the star players. It's about no. w the culture. It's about what you're able to get out of them. It's about how, mu how much are you able to influence their mindset. Mm -hmm. it's, about, it's about creating great teams. Right. And great team. Great teams are not a collection of great players. Absolutely, they they, they can be, but right. a, a great team is one that's got great team spirit, mm -hmm. uh, a, a shared vision that they believe in, mm -hmm. and then the confidence to go out and do it. 
I'm reminded of a Peter F. Drucker quote here, uh, which goes something like this. There's only three things that happen naturally in organizations or teams is friction, confusion, and underperformance. Everything else requires leadership, right? So uh, Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, um, and my favorite Drucker quote is, um, management is about making sure we do things right. Right. And I think a lot of people are focused on that. But leadership mm -hmm. is about making sure we do the right thing. Absolutely. And it's it, and it's the right thing, doing mm -hmm. the right thing repeatedly, mm -hmm. which is going to get you the results. If you do the wrong thing repeatedly, mm -hmm. and you do, it doesn't matter whether you do the wrong thing, you, mm -hmm. you ain't going to succeed. So this is for me why leadership is, uh, is key. And we've got to be brave enough to say, this is the wrong thing. Right. This this won't work. Let's let's True. try something else. True. True. And that's a huge misconception out there, isn't it? Is this uh, people interchangeably use these terms, manage and lead? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, would you spend some time on helping us? You've already pointed out one of the fundamental differences, uh, but help us with, with a few more, especially for a young executive right now, for a young person, 24, 25, 26 year old, who's into his first job and is just about to step into his first supervisory or quote unquote management role. Um, and there's a lot of confusion around this subject. Can can you help uh, us, you know, uh, and and the audience sort of distinguish between the the qualities of these two roles, and especially for first timers, and and do is it important to get a title before you, you know, actually begin to lead, or what's the correlation there, Gordon? Thanks. Yeah. So so no, I don't think I think a lot of people wait until they get the title to lead but that would be like waiting to be called up by the indian cricket team before you start to practice cricket it's never, <laughs> good good it's one ne it's never right. gonna happen right I have never i have never promoted somebody right <laughs> into a leadership position that wasn't already leading never mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if you and if you wait how do i know whether you can do it and the, the difference between leadership and management, as I say, I think Drucker gets it uh, right in that management is about making sure you do things right, and mm -hmm. leadership is about making sure you do the right things. The right things. And there's a lot, and there's a lot of time people say leadership good, management bad, but no, they are they are different sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Le leadership, it's about setting the vision, the ambition, motivating, inspiring people, coaching, developing them. Mm -hmm. uh, creating the culture, setting the direction. And right. then management is about making sure that we're, we're monitoring and controlling our progress against that direction. Right. So if you just lead and don't manage, you mm -hmm. come up with some brilliant ideas, but you won't get people over the finish line. Right, you get you nothing done. Mm -hmm. And if you just manage, you just keep doing the same thing well. Um, leadership, it's about changing the status quo, taking things to that next level. Uh -huh, so sometimes the risks. you just got to look at it and do things differently. Mm -hmm. And that's a very important dis uh, distinction there, uh, which is th there's a set manual for management and there perhaps is no manual as such for leadership. You got to create your own. You got to move forward into uncertainty uh, and take. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, yeah, I'm just thinking about now. I think the, the difficulty or the challenge is that I think management is a much more exact science. Right. Whereas, whereas leadership, because it's all about processes, procedures, uh -huh. tracking, monitoring, systems, reporting, and manuals. Right. Doing detail, detailed plans. It's very mm -hmm. mechanical. Whereas mm -hmm. leadership, it's about people. It's That's about right. inspiring and motivating people. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is why emotional intelligence. It, it is so important because you've got to make the connection with people. You've got right. to generate that buy-in. It, it requires a level of salesmanship. It doesn't. Because do. sometimes, sometimes you've got to persuade people uh -huh. to go somewhere where they don't think they could go. And you've got, you've got to get them to you know, create that belief in them. Mm -hmm. It's about changing those beliefs. It's about questioning those Correct. beliefs. It's about being an example, a role model. Uh, yeah. offering an example of what other people can possibly do. You know, if I can do it, you can do it, do. Or if the other person can do it, you can. It's creating an environment where people are, you know, rising up to higher standards, right? Yeah, so when I, it's a, it's a simple example, but it, it, it's a good um, example of it. Sure. I, I decided to do my first marathon at 52. Mm, and, oh, and, wow. my, and, my, and my two best friends, 
uh, Tommy, you're too old, you're too mm. fat, you're too unfit. And mm. I don't know whether, whether your audience knows this, gentlemen, but there's a guy called Faruja Singh. Faruja Singh, yes. A 100-year-old Indian man who ran the London Marathon. Uh-huh. So, so, you know, he's 100, he did it, I'm 52. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's just cross that age thing out. Yeah, that, you know. absolutely. And, and, and you're telling me that a 100-year-old guy is fitter than I am? Right. No. That means, right. Let's let's cross that out. Okay. Absolutely. I'm too fat. Right. Okay. He's definitely thinner than me, and we can work on that. But <laughs> you know, it, it's about getting rid of those barriers. And then, you know, I put in place a simple plan, and I told them I'm going to run 15 minutes a day for a week, and then I'll run 20 minutes, and then I'll run 25. And they said, so you're just going to run five minutes more every week? And I said, yeah. But in 26 weeks, I'll be mm-hmm. running for around four hours, which mm-hmm. is going to be close to doing a marathon. And mm-hmm. they said to me, we'll do it with you. So mm-hmm. they went from, you can't do it, which is really, we can't do it, so you definitely can't do it. Right, right. To, yeah, that'll work. We, uh-huh. we, we believe that now, so right. we'll do it. With, and the three, of us, the three of us, six months later, uh, ran our first marathon. So it's wow. about changing that, breaking through, those uh-huh. limiting beliefs, right? And re- you know, creating those, um, creating the uh, belief that you can be better. I mean, one of my favourite leaders. Um, I'm sadly we just sacked him from my football team. Is Marcello Bielsa at Leeds United, and mm-hmm. in six weeks he changed the culture. Mm-hmm. But for one of the players, he told them, "I'm going to change your position," and the player said, "I don't want to do that." Mm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable in central midfield. I don't want to play defensive midfield. Mm-hmm. And you know, this is a player who's in the second division in an average team. And he said to him, if you do this, mm-hmm. within two years, you'll be playing for England. Mm. And the player was like, sorry, what? He said, mm. if, if, if you move to this position and follow what I say, you will be an England player. And uh-huh. so the player, you know, he liked that idea. Whether whether he truly, he, I think he wanted to believe it for right. sure. But you know, move that player into that position, and then two years later, uh, Calvin Phillips was a star of the England team, playing mm-hmm. in the European uh, final against Italy. So when you've got that track record of being able to develop people and you tell right. them if you, if you do what I say they'll go people uh-huh. will follow people will follow you anyway but it's about creating that belief you know um, there's this wonderful John Quincy Adams uh, the sixth president of the United States uh, wonderful definition of leadership here which is so appropriate to what you just said it's about somebody tinkering with the roles and someone you know inspire showing them the future a glimpse of the possibilities of the if they change their ways and your own personal example there about running the marathon and uh, picking Mr. Forza Singh as the ideal who'd broken the barrier that if he could yeah. do it he's a f- 105 now his ancestral village is not very far from where I live Gordon it's only maybe a 30 oh, really? minute drive and so he comes oh, here I- I'd love to meet him. <laughs> yeah, me too. I've just uh, I keep missing him in all these little events that keep happening around the city. I've, uh, it's my dream also to meet him someday. Um, so John Quincy Adams on leadership, he said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, to learn more, to do more, and to become more, you are a leader. So if you, if for the choices you're making, if they help others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you're a leader. Your thoughts on that, Gordon? Uh, well, I have two thoughts. I share that quote quite often. Oh, you and do? I keep getting informed by the John Quincy Adams Foundation that he never said that. Oh, really? And, okay. actually, I, and, the, <laughs> and you, you know the person it will, is attributed to. Um, um, but I think it's less presidential. Apparently, it's Dolly Parton. Oh, is it? Oh, really? Well, yeah, yeah. But, but it's been it, people have looked at it and said, "Wow, that's great. Let's find somebody presidential." <laughs> this happens all the yeah, time. The yeah. like the the Buddha quotes or the yeah, Dalai Lama yeah. quotes, Mother yeah, Teresa. So, one. Okay. So every every time I tweet it out on Twitter, people go, "It's not him. It's Dolly Parton." <laughs> like, okay. All right. Um, well. But but that doesn't change. I, I absolutely, I completely and utterly uh, agree in that. Yeah, if if by our actions we can inspire others to do more, be more, want more than you're a leader, and I think sometimes the th- that's definitely in terms of setting an example. Mm-hmm. Um, but but also if you apply that to coaching, mm. if you can inspire them 
to, mm -hmm. to want to do more, be more, and uh, achieve more, then you're a leader. And I, 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 I put that down as my number one leadership quote. Oh, wow. So for me, that's what that's what leadership is all about. And mm -hmm. you know, it, and it, it, when I was ten, I played in a rugby team where we finished middle of the table. We won ten, lost ten. We were average, but uh, in the cup, we only played the teams below us, mm -hmm. and we managed to. And when we got to the final, and mm -hmm. in the final, we played the team that had won the league mm -hmm. and had beaten us by a cricket score, both mm -hmm. home and away, and. Mm -hmm. When in the final, we were we were pretty, you know, downbeat because mm. you know you're, you're playing the best team in the league, and I can't just kept to kept us and said, yeah, but that's the league. This mm. is cup football. This is different. Mm -hmm. You know, we're unbeaten in cup football. They're unbeaten in cup fo football. They're the same. The difference is we've played them at their best. They've right. never seen us as the unbeaten cup team. Right. We're going to come out and surprise them, and we're going to develop tactics and techniques that we're going to use. Mm -hmm. And you guys are going to come out, surprise them, and we're going to win that game. And mm -hmm. they gave us each some you know instructions, and they changed things around a little bit. And um, we, we as a team that had been beaten by an average of thirty points in the two games previous, we won the cup final six three because oh, wow. he changed he changed that belief in us. Fantastic. We believed, right? We believed that we were a better team. Uh -huh. than, than we actually were and uh, we, you know, we scored first which then gave us a little bit of you know a lead to hold on to right. and you know we managed to do it and, and it, it's those kind of things that you know it shows you that leadership can can make take average players and create right. a great team yeah it can and, make all and, the difference and mm -hmm. poor leadership um can take great players and turn them into an average team Absolutely, absolutely. And you had the evidence, all the evidence to the contrary, you know, in your rugby team example, where you're playing with the best team. And, you know, yeah. so it's it's about how you view that situation. It's not the event. It's not the challenge in itself, but how you process it and how you help other people process it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think this is where management comes in as well. So leadership, leadership, we use to create the belief, but then mm -hmm. management is all the preparation. Right. You know, all of the training, the changing the of the work. tactics, uh -huh. you know, all of the details. I, I you know, I, I, I love sport, and I've, mm. I can honestly say, I, I've, I've never been great at anything, mm. but I've, and I, but I've always, I've always beaten, uh, occasionally beaten people that were better than myself because they came in unprepared, right? Or, or they were they thought they they but they thought they would win but they hadn't done the work i've mm -hmm. never been beaten by somebody or i don't ever remember being beaten somebody who wasn't as good as me mm -hmm. because i always prepared mm -hmm. so you know i was able to um you know i would say i was i played at a higher level than my ability mm -hmm. because of that prep that preparation commitment and determination right. which i right. think of as management uh, so we've got to have those two things. You, you can't just tell people you're better go out there and win. Mm -hmm, You've mm -hmm. got to be able to show them step by step how right. this is going to work. And, and once you've got people believing in it and it's something they want to do, boom, that's when the magic happens. That's when you get great results. And that's a great insight there for especially for young people, since we were talking about that, is uh, there is a misconception based on college grades or how well I did in school or how well I did on a certain entrance exam or, you know, yeah. they get this misconception about um, talent and how smart they are and then, and, and then expecting that the world should treat them in a certain way. And that doesn't happen because, as you rightly said, you, you have to put in the effort, the hard work, the lay the groundwork, have a strong work ethic in place. And that's when you're prepared and you can beat the best if, if you have Absol that preparation. Right. Abs absolutely. It, mm. It's just, it's wasted potential. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you don't, if you don't put all of the groundwork and, and we see it in sport all the time, people that are phenomenally gifted but just don't do the hard work. I right. mean, for me, I, I'm, I'm sure we have the same opinion. Um, mm -hmm. I hate Australian cricket. I, mm. You know, if uh, any, it doesn't matter who they're playing, even if it's Pakistan, I am cheering for the <laughs> team that's playing against uh, <laughs> right. Australia. Yet mm. they, they have a culture of hard work, dedication uh, that that just that just delivers. You know, when they've got when they've got uh, good players. 
they're the world's best team. When they've mm. got average players, they're one of the top teams and they're still difficult to beat. <laughs> you, you, you never get a cheap win against mm. Australia. Right. Never. Right. And that's right. that, and that's that, you know, that preparation, that grit, that determination, that uh -huh. mentality that's uh -huh. embedded into that team. Uh, that's a great metaphor there. I, re uh, I respect them. I hate them, but I respect <laughs> them. <laughs> it, 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 so uh, that, that's an interesting example because it's not the individual as much no. as as much as the culture as, as in which the individual is being put. So it's not right. the individual greatness, not the individual talent, but the environment, the leadership, the shared ethos. Yeah, the expectation. Right. The level of expectation. I mean, what am I... F Again, not a team that I particularly support, but one that I respect tremendously is the New Zealand All Blacks. Mm -hmm. They come from a, a country with a population of three million, mm -hmm. and yet they win. They've won something like eighty percent of their games mm -hmm. over the last hundred years. They've right. been in the top top three teams every mm -hmm. year for the mm -hmm. last hundred years. They've won more World Cups, and yet they come from such a small a small country with such a small playing population but they have right. that that ethos that attitude that culture uh -huh. uh, and there's a there's a great video uh if your audience wants to watch it and it's called the, the history of the hacker uh -huh. which talks about the 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 importance of the hacker right in uh, new zealand cricket and it all comes back to a small tribe who were gonna on the verge of extinction and they did right. the, stance the it. maoris it, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's a it's a, a statement of do or die Right, right. They, they have the haka before the, the rugby, the rugby yeah. matches as well. Uh, I yeah. happen to be in Sydney, Australia. In uh, you know, there's this Bledisloe Cup, I believe, between Bledisloe us. Cup, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Australia and New Zealand. And I was working for a company called Sodexo, working as, as a server in one of the uh, corporate suites back then as a part-time job with my university studies. And that was quite a spectacle, you know, just to see what's going on. And um, the the haka is, I believe, is their Maori traditional dance before they go to yeah. war, right? So it's that war. Your Absolutely. mindset and it's it's uh, it's amazing. Um, I want to come back to and it's, uh, and, it's, yeah. and it's a reminder to them before it shouldn't be allowed because it's a reminder to them of the culture before every game. You know, we're in this together, team teamwork over individual, uh -huh. do or die, do or bring die, it on. right? Bring it on, mm -hmm. and uh, it, yeah, that, that just creates it's a, it reinforces mm -hmm. their culture who they are, and mm -hmm. uh, it. Uh, and that ripples throughout the through all levels, you know, even down mm. to school kids. Mm -hmm. So they're just building this conveyor belt of people mm. who know what it means to be an all black, what's mm -hmm. expected, you know, do or die. Right. And it, you know, this is the difference for them between you know being an uh, an average team and the best team in the world. Absolutely, the expect, they they know the sort of expectations um, that people have from them, and um, they certainly aspire to or do their best to live up to them. I want to uh, circle back to corporate leadership or business leadership or even even political leadership for that matter. Uh, what are your thoughts about the current level of leadership in the world, you know, given especially from an engagement point of view because the numbers are pathetic. 80% uh, people either don't care about their jobs or hate their jobs. It's only maybe 15 to 20% are engaged actually at their workplaces. What's going wrong? What are we doing wrong and how can we rectify it? So I, I, think, th I think there is a leadership crisis or a leadership vacuum. Certainly uh -huh. in the uh, political arena, there's very few leaders that I think people look up to. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and there's the, you know, this kind of isolationism, you know, I think it started, well, I'm not sure where it started, but I first noticed it strongly with the UK and Brexit and then, mm -hmm. you know, <coughs> Trump coming in as president and America mm -hmm. first. And, mm -hmm. and I don't think that uh, engages the, the wider audience. There are a few people who think, there is a percentage that think, okay, we're doing it for us now. But mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's more a scarcity mentality than mm -hmm. an abundance mentality. Right. And I, think, and I think in business we've made it so much more about, you know, uh, revenue and profitability. Mm -hmm. Numbers. That, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the, for me, one of the biggest lies in business is when people say, our people are our greatest asset, mm -hmm. and then you watch them lay twenty five percent of the people off. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think, and I think the we're we're in that, you know, the um, it's all for all for one mentality, 
Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't think we have that same sense of, you know, or, and I, it might have just been a veneer or a perception mm -hmm. that we had. That, mm -hmm. you know, the, we, we had a much more, a much stronger sense of community and we were doing things together for each other. Now it's mm -hmm. in, we seem to be moving much more to individualism. Uh, right. And then in you know, jobs, why would I be engaged? I'm getting mm -hmm. paid anyway. Mm. And you know, I'll, I'll take the next job that pays me more money. Right, right. Which, and I think that's got a short. <clears throat> I think it, for an individual, that can have a short-term benefit, but mm -hmm. for the collective, it has no yep. uh, benefit whatsoever. And mm -hmm. we can actually generate better overall results if we work together. Right. You know, a, a rising tide floats all boats, but mm. we, we just seem to be in an era where people are only concerned about their boat mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. if, and if you're if your sinks to get mine iron mm. fire torpedo one yeah so what what would your advice be gordon to perhaps a, a leader especially a new leader someone who's just stepped into a leadership role and um, they're coming with sincere intentions to you know make a difference to rally the people together towards a common goal um what should they be doing in order to get their team in the right direction so first of all, I applaud them for doing that, uh -huh. and, and I would I would say, keep doing it. You've got the you've got the right intentions. You will generate better results, uh -huh. um, not only in the short term but absolutely in the long term. You'll mm -hmm. deliver sustainable results, and mm -hmm. if you if you start to get pressure to change your style, resist it. Mm. F follow what you follow what you believe in. I, I, mm -hmm. I worked in a company where. I, I, I helped improve performance in my department by okay. 50 to 500 percent and my bosses kept telling me we love your results but we don't like your leadership style okay and I said well where do you think the results are coming from <laughs> and they what they want they wanted me to lead like them they wanted me to do command and control leadership mm -hmm. but I knew that wasn't going to generate right the same results but they didn't want to lead but like I me mean, they didn't mm -hmm. want to get close to the people you know mm -hmm. I, I take a, a a leadership uh a we care philosophy you know i right. care about results i care about my team and sure. i care about my customer you know mm -hmm. i look at all three of it three things holistically and if i if i take care of my team first uh -huh. then they will take care of the results which will take care of the customers right so i, I tend to follow that uh, so ripple approach. effect and i would just say people yeah if you if you're following that approach stick with it don't get talked out of it it's the right approach just because other people cannot lead like you do uh -huh. yeah do, don't believe you're on the wrong path right i worked for, i worked for dhl and it was one of the saddest days of my career mm. i was i was doing quite well and i did some leadership training in malaysia and we did a thing called the insight wheel test okay which you answered 50 questions and it gave you a psychological uh, profile, a breakdown of yourself. Uh, and I was in, you know, and you have these colors, it's red, orange, uh, mm -hmm. blue, green, whether you're analytical, people oriented. And I was in the orange area, which was inspiring, motivational leader. And I thought, oh, yeah, that fit, that resonates with me. That's what I, from a, mm. I I feel that's what I do. And I also like that that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And as uh, part of that, they said, and now we're going to show you everybody's in the classes uh, result. And we could see some people are a little bit more green, a little bit more people focused. Some are more red and blue, a bit more directing, mm -hmm. data focused. And then they said, we're going to show the results from the senior management team. And mm -hmm. every single person was in the same red, blue sector. Okay. And re red, blue is for analytical. Uh, uh, control, uh, controlling, directing. Ah, and that, control. Yeah, that's twelve o'clock, and I was at three o'clock, and I just thought <laughs> they're never going to invite me <laughs> to be in that club. I am right. different to them. They yeah. don't understand. They right. don't understand me. They don't do what I do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm not one of them. I'm not going to get invited. 
Uh, yeah, into, I understand. As, as they say, Gordon, the the um, the bottleneck is usually at the top of the bottle, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, Ab- absolutely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now it's interesting what, what you said when you were pointed out regarding your leadership style, and you said, "Where do you think the results are coming from?" And that that's yeah. an interesting, ironic thing because somehow there's this uh, people believe, especially senior managers uh, or people who are disconnected with the ground level realities, that yeah. results are coming through technology or the new machines that we uh, installed or the new software of course all of those things play they, they play a major role but then who's driving them at the end of the day your people are and your people yeah. have the choice the ability either to get the best out of the technology machinery etc that you have or the worst out of it and if if they are in a culture which is toxic you know disengaged employees that's what they're doing every day and that's a 30 percent of the workforce disengaged every day they wake up come to work trying to undermine what their other colleagues are doing and that's that's a dangerous uh, trend yeah so uh, absolutely and one mm-hmm. of the things i i'm passionate about engagement but i'm more passionate about something else which is empowerment um, mm. because persuading people to be involved but then right. not giving them the tools to be successful uh-huh I, how how long does engagement re- remain if you're not empowered I it wouldn't, right? No, no. So, so we've got all of these programs on employee engagement, uh-huh. and we keep doing them, and yet the needle doesn't go up. It's mm. been fifteen percent globally, and I don't believe that number. Uh, if I'm honest, it's fifteen percent globally and thirty percent in the U.S. I've mm-hmm. worked in the U.S. for six years. American people are not more engaged than we are. Mm. I think they just say they are. So whether whether the rest of the world is thirty and say fifteen. Or mm-hmm. whether America is fifteen and says thirty, I don't right. know. But I, Americans are not twice as engaged. Mm-hmm. They are at, at best the, the, a similar level of engagement. But if, but it, you know, the, and those numbers have been flat for twenty, thirty years. Mm-hmm. So it's not just it's not just engagement. It's about you know once you've got them engaged, empowering them, Empowerment. and then rec- and, and then recognizing them. You know, uh-huh. if you if you create a team that does a great job. Of course, they're empowered. But if right. you then let go twenty percent of the workforce because profits have dropped, everybody's going to look at that and think, "Why did I bother?" Right. You know, so you've got to have that engagement, the empowerment, and then the recognition. And that mm-hmm. recognition has got to be a sharing, you know, praise, but also a sharing of the benefits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, we, know, we, if, we have to understand if if um, if employers treat their employees as disposable commodities. Um, em- employers should not be surprised when they return the same favor, right? <laughs> when employees treat Ab- them as absolutely, absolutely, mm-hmm. <clears throat> employment then becomes a, a employment becomes a disposable commodity. Yeah, yeah, a, tr- a transactional thing. You know, it's it's Correct. all about money focus. Yeah. I, I want to share some some. This is this is what I came across. Uh, Gallup published an article on successfully inspiring Mendelian employees, and it t- talks about the past and the future of how leaders should view what was prevalent in the past, what worked in the past, and what the future demands. In the past, it says uh, the focus was on the paycheck. The future, the focus has to be on the purpose. The past was my satisfaction. The future is my development. The past was my boss. My future is my coach. The past was about my annual review. My future is about my ongoing conversations. The past was about my job. The future is about my life. And is an interesting contrast there that how the expectations of the millennials, especially, are the changing. Uh, I I completely disagree with that. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. I I don't think the perspectives have changed at all. When I was, I, I'm a baby boomer. When I was mm. coming through, it was all. It was never about the purchase. It was all about the, the purpose. I think the big difference now is that millennials are speaking up more uh-huh. and are less tolerant of the crappy leadership uh-huh. that we had previously. And I, right. and I don't think, and it's like people saying, oh, you know, um, you've got to lead differently because of millennials. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. like, no, not really. Mm-hmm. Leadership hasn't changed since the days of Alexander the Great and mm-hmm. Julius Caesar and, and, and before then. But what what has happened is the tolerance mm-hmm. for poor leadership. The more vocal, uh, right? Well. Correct. Mm-hmm. And and now that and now you've made it as uh, employment is a disposable commodity. 
Mm-hmm. If you don't, if you don't have the right leadership, then I'm just going to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. So you know, I, it has to be. I want more than that from my job. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. I remember that my first day in my first job um, as a baby boomer back in '86. There was uh-huh. a gentleman being given a gold watch for 30 years of mm-hmm. service, mm-hmm. and I remember thinking, I don't, I don't believe I'll work for this company for the next 30 years. Right. I thought I. You, know, you didn't want the, the world. Words. <clears throat> the world has changed right. since since you know whatever it was, nineteen fifty six, mm-hmm. when that guy signed. It, it is a faster pace, more more change, and I think that's even more so now with the uh, with the flatter world and people being able to work remotely around the world. I think mm-hmm. I think the options are uh, are wider, and and especially with the remote working as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. command and control leadership has never really worked, and it definitely doesn't work in a remote environment. So I think it's you know it's a death knell for a type of leadership, which mm-hmm. you know we talk we often talk about alpha males, alpha leaders, mm-hmm. you know alpha women as well as you know being a, a, a leadership type. But actually, that's only in a command and control situation, right? Domination, and mm-hmm. and, and, and now we're in a the the control lies the control has always sat with the employee because mm-hmm. they're the one that pushed the button they're mm-hmm. the one that run the machine they've sure. always had the control right so it's so you know it's um, central command and distributed control and mm-hmm. you have to recognize that ownership of control and also where possible distribute command as well mm-hmm. so now I, now i see myself as right. a, a conductor in an orchestra, I don't mm-hmm. play any instrument, mm-hmm. so I I cannot add to the quality of the music right. by uh, by my own personal contribution, uh, you know, audio contribution, you know, mm-hmm. from the music. Mm-hmm. But as the as the or- as the conductor of the orchestra, I uh-huh. can bring that. I can bring all of the components together to right. create a better sound. But I mm-hmm. don't play any instrument. Mm-hmm. And I don't right. even need to know how to play the violin. I just need to. I've just got to bring them all together, and bring that's how together. I see uh, leadership. So, yeah, and and that cannot be command and control. It cannot be. It's it's collaboration and cooperation. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. In, yeah. in especially in when when there's a virtual workforce, when there's people scattered in different parts of the world. In fact, um, we here in our at our office, Gordon. The, uh, you know, since you mentioned that orchestra and conductor um, example, it came to my mind. Yeah. A lot of the work that happens here is just for we can't. I mean, okay, I add value when I'm speaking in front of the camera. I'm presenting yeah. my content, and then the entire video production is done by different teams processes to which I cannot directly add value I can help you know share examples or you know we could change it like this and you know, give them my opinions and uh, my inputs etc but it's them who are doing the work and my job is just to then put it together in a way that right from the thumbnail to the audio track to the how the text appears to etc etc so when the final piece comes voila it's like five or six people collaborated sitting in different parts of the world and that's what it is and nobody's here physically in our office yeah, yeah, and, and no, no leader does it on his own. Mm-hmm. And if if the leader, if the success comes through the leader's hands, uh-huh. then you're not a leader; you're a limitation because you've only got <laughs> like two that. hands. Right. Whereas right. if we can, if we can encourage collaboration and cooperation, we can do that across more and more people. Absolutely. And, and therefore, our uh, impact and output is infinite. It you know, is the, huge. It's there huge. are seven billion people you could influence. Definitely. If it's just your two hands, then you're a, you're a limitation. Your your limitation. Having, mm-hmm. And it's having that. A lot of it is having that confidence to say, I I'm not, I'm you know I'm not playing any instrument, mm-hmm. but I have a role which is going to help you guys. I'm going to help create an environment where you guys play mm-hmm. better. Mm-hmm. And and I'll get credit. Uh, as for being the the conductor, but you'll get you'll get credit for the for your instruments and your individual contribution, and we get shared credit. And mm-hmm. it's about having that it's about having that courage to you know uh, step back and say it's not me, mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's about us, not me. But again, a lot of you know what you would define as alpha personalities is they won't let this me. happen. That's the opposite. It's, right? all, it's all about me, and we've mm. spent years promoting people like that. Right. And what do they do? They promote people like them. So mm -hmm. we have this we have this legacy of leadership mm -hmm. that's in situ now. That is, you know, um, predominantly certainly in uh, Western. Western mm -hmm. world is predominantly old white males, mm -hmm. and you know we, it needs to be eroded to bring mm -hmm. more and more people, you know, right. more diversity into the leadership. And you know, people are asking me, how do I feel about you know women as leaders? And motherhood is probably the the, the thing most akin to leadership there is because you you start by managing people, managing the the children, but then you have no control. <laughs> Anybody who's any as, kids, right? As time passes that. by, you, I can. You, well, I got two daughters you, myself. Yeah. <laughs> you've got to inspire them and more. It's right. about leading. Right. It's not uh -huh. about. It's no longer. You can manage them to a certain point. Uh -huh. but, you know, once, once they get that free will that around uh, terrible twos kind of time, it's uh, it's about leading and inspiring. So mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. you know, I think women have got great leadership skills. Uh, I think you know leadership. multitasking. The women are very good at multitasking. Yeah, with yeah. Is playing, um, playing, juggling with so many different things at the same time, right? Yeah, abso absolutely, and, and leadership is about that. And I think, you know, the, the, that nurturing capability, you know, leadership, Empathy. it's about yeah. developing, it's about nurturing people. Sure. It's, about, it's about having that sense of um, a care for us rather than a care for me. And right. I think some of those things are, are much more natural uh, to for, women. for women as, True. You know, as part of the requirement for, for mothers. So I think women have got a great future in leadership, but we've got, we've got this legacy of old white men or old men in leadership yeah. that we need to we need to uh, erode and I, and I hate to say that as an old white man I feel like that's <laughs> But I'm a good one. Keep me, I'm a good one. Yeah, well, we, we trust you on that one. Well, <laughs> definitely. I think it's, it's the legacy of the entire manufacturing era that, yeah. you know, uh, it, that we're still stuck in, by and large, changing. The startup culture is changing it. Globalization is changing it. Virtual uh, workforce is changing it. And uh, the world is becoming flatter. And uh, so th there is definitely a ray of hope. But w what I do feel is at the same time, uh, you know, it's very appropriate here, the, the Chinese philosopher for Lao Tzu, he said the real leader is the one when when uh, is the one when people when he gets the job done, people say we did this ourselves, right? Absolutely, uh, absolutely, and and that's tough for a leader mm -hmm. because we we normally have a little bit of ego if we're putting ourselves forward, but yeah. then you've got you've got to reconcile that with you. Ideally, you want your team to say we did it without you. Because mm -hmm. if they if they can say that, then you can step back and start leading others. But it's difficult. It's difficult to say, mm. you know, because I, I got I was a little bit involved. Yeah, <laughs> I want a little. We, we all want recognition. I don't want to get fired. You know, I still yeah. have, have I still have a job around here. <laughs> well, I, I, but I, well, I think I think the people above us would see that, and, and we have yeah. to get comfortable with reflected glory. Mm -hmm. uh, rather mm -hmm. than, than hands-on glory. And right. one thing I like I would that. Say to Reflective you, I, glory. I think, it, I think a lot of the, the things that are a legacy of um, the industrial area, but also as well, you know, one of the questions, are leaders born or made? Mm -hmm. For me, when I look at that, I hate that because I think, I think it's true that leaders were born, but that's because you could only be the king if mm -hmm. you were the firstborn son of the king. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then we had... You know, we had the, the nobility and the ruling classes. You know, you, you couldn't, you, if you were a noble, you, mm -hmm. you, were, you were born into leadership. Uh, right. And the poorer people, oh, you can't be a leader. You're mm -hmm. born. So leaders being born, not made, that's mm -hmm. just the class system separating, mm -hmm. you know, separating the ruling class. Which sure. we, and it's called the ruling class. So if they're mm -hmm. telling us that if you're not born into the ruling class, you can't be a ruler. So right. I, whenever people ask me, you know, are leaders born or made? My answer is always made. However, mm -hmm. we, we did live in a time where the birthright mm -hmm. might, you know, might put you into the ruling class, even mm -hmm. though you had zero mm -hmm. talent or legitimacy. Right. 
to be. Oh, it still happens. It still happens. You know, yeah. it, it, it may maybe not directly, but you know, whether it's in businesses, whether it's in politics, we still yeah. see it happening. And um, I think it's down to yeah, the, those the who CEOs, are being. The CEO's son takes over as CEO, right. based on what? Mm -hmm. And then you see that company crumble. Was yep. it very few? I, I kept what the percentage is. Uh, the number of companies that survived the third generation mm -hmm. is staggering because right. of that decline, and it, and that's you know it's partly because you know the the, the the person who created it was a leader, could do it, and you've now handed it down through birthright into people. On a platter. Who, mm -hmm. Who's not they don't have the motivation, their ambition, yep. or the skills. They're not passionate about it as much as the grandfather no. was, who put, you know, yeah. put in all the yeah. efforts. I completely agree with that. Now, thank you so much, Gordon. This has been an interesting discussion here today on leadership, on cricket, on sports, on self-development, self-limiting beliefs. Before <coughs> we let you go, sir, uh, what are the three specific things would you would highly recommend? Uh, when I say things, what I mean is um, development practices. Let me put it that way. Three development practices that a young person who's listening to this conversation can start to Today to improve his or her leadership potential in the long run. So uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple of answers. So the first one I would say, if you want to improve your leadership, I always tell people there's four things that you can do daily, and that's uh -huh. uh, smile more, listen more, talk more, praise more. So those are four things that will just okay. improve you as a leader. Smiling so. makes you approachable. It reduces stress. It makes mm -hmm. people feel connected. Listen makes people feel respected mm -hmm. um, and you might learn something sure. as well Absolutely. Um, talk more share the vision tell your teams what what it is we're trying to do and why and then praise more mm -hmm. yeah, the, what gets recognized gets repeated this mm -hmm. is why we have this is why we have fans at cricket matches mm -hmm. you know we're, we're, we're not cheering the six we're asking mm. them to do give a second six. Yes, so, we need another. Like, that was good. We want more of that. More of that. Right? Bill Mange so, more. <laughs> so, so that's that's one thing I would say. So smile yeah. more, listen more, talk more, press more. And then sure. I think you've got to be. Uh, people are not afraid of hard work; they're afraid of failure. So mm -hmm. look at showing your teams how they can be successful. Break it down to them step by step. Ask them. Do they see how it's going to work? IBM showed on projects that failed, 75% mm -hmm. of the time, people knew day one this project was going to fail. Mm -hmm. So ask people, you know, do you feel that you're going to be successful? And, and uh -huh. if they say not, you know, see whether you can explain it to them in a way that understands or if there's a, uh -huh. they, they've got something missing, uh -huh. uh, provide that to them. Because if we can put people in a position to be successful, 99.9% .9 of them will take it. And then the last thing is accountability. Right. Be accountable and hold people accountable. But we cannot make people accountable. Accountability mm -hmm. is about ownership and they have to take ownership. And the easiest way to do that is to ask them, do you have everything you need to be successful? And when right. they say yes, they've accepted ownership. Because mm -hmm. I've got everything. Implied. I've absolutely got everything. Mm -hmm. So those would be the those would be the three things. Smile, listen, talk, praise more. Focus on showing people how they can be successful and sure. then asking them, do they have everything they need to be successful? And if you can do that, you'll get inspired people who mm -hmm. will be accountable and you'll create an environment that people want to be part of. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. And, um, and it's very simple. It's easy to practice. Smile more, the, the emotional connect, the human connect, listen more, speak more, which is to share your vision. And uh, what was the fourth one that I missed? Uh, praise more. Praise, praise, praise more. more. Yeah. Appreciation. Praise. Uh, deep down, that's a top psychological need, right? Uh, all of us have. Yeah, this, yeah absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So Muscle for all, absolutely for everybody who's tuning in we would love to hear your praise and appreciation in the comment <laughs> section <laughs> yeah Good it will encourage us to do it will encourage us to do more absolutely absolutely and if i may if i may add to that i think one, one of the things it just comes to my mind is um, um i was reading this case study the other day about the ordinary heroes of the taj when the taj hotel in mumbai uh, was uh, attacked by the terrorists yeah. the the star had never been trained on anything like that before Gordon that's an interesting case study we'll share the link in the description for the yeah. TED talk as well for everybody who's interested in watching
watching it. But those people, they they rose to the occasion, you know, to, they rose to the, to meet the challenge, not having the skills or previous training or any kind of certainty how this dynamic, volatile situation is going to shape up. But they were there and none of them abandoned the, the hotel. The journal manager himself, he's, uh, he lost his wife and two sons in, in that terrorist attack. But he was the son of a general and he was on the uh, army general in, in India. And he was on the phone um, with his father who said, son, you're the captain of the ship. Do what you have to. And he, but that single thing changed the whole dynamic for him. And um, it, it's quite an interesting case study of how people rose to the occasion to defend their guests, their customers, their property, and to fight as hard as they could. So what does that tell you? Well, from my perspective, is is about you are going to face so many situations in your life uh, where, for which you're not prepared. You don't have the formal training. You don't know how that situation is going to play out. And there's going to be a lot of lot at, uh, at the stake. Uh, but still, you move forward with what you know. You don't uh, find an escape. Um, mechanism. I think leadership is all about facing problems head on. At the core, you're a problem solver. Um, at the heart of leadership is solving problems, enabling other people. And sometimes um, is not just about enabling. Sometimes it's leading from the front, rolling up your sleeves and standing in the line of fire. Absolutely. And I would also say that mm -hmm. if we'd have asked the people before, could they do that? They would have probably said no. But what it right. shows to me is that we can all we can all do a lot better Absolutely. than we think yeah. if we're challenged. And, and and I'm not suggesting that we send terrorist attacks on the companies mm -hmm. to get their teams to improve performance. Mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting that. But right. what I'm suggesting is that we can all do more, and it's mm -hmm. a question of tapping into that potential. Absolutely. And that's what leaders do. You know, mm -hmm. John Quincy Adams. If you can inspire people to do more, be more, want more, then you are a leader. And they did that in that environment. But that implies that there is more there. Yeah, it's just untapped. Yes, yeah, it's, it's more there. Leaders, right. As right. leaders, our job is to untap. Mm -hmm. It's to tap that untapped potential. Untap it. Right. Show people it's there. Pull it out of them and let them be mm -hmm. the best version of themselves. The message is loud and clear, guys. Message is loud and clear. There is more within you than you're currently using, every single one of you, and applies to us as well. There's more within us than we're currently using, and leadership or self-leadership is about bringing more out of, out of yourself, and leadership is about bringing more of that from other people. Mr. Gordon Treadgall, it's been such a pleasure, sir. Thank you. I, I, have, I have a question for you. Yes, please. Well, I'm, I'm, because I'm just now going to go watch a movie. Have you uh -huh. heard of the movie 83? 83 oh this is about the the cricket couple dave right mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah i just saw it advertised yesterday so i'm now gonna go and watch oh, the wow, movie fantastic. 83 now on netflix my, my, my era my era of cricket couple mm -hmm. dev uh, imran mm -hmm. khan right Jeffrey and what, what a story that is of couple dave's uh, uh, leadership as well right at that point <clears throat> a team was going through so much and yet they pulled it off and i think uh Great the movies leadership. Mm -hmm. The movie's pretty well made as well, so I've heard I have to watch it yet myself. But uh, yeah. it's on Netflix now, so it's more convenient. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, that's, well, so that's what I'm going to be doing for the next two hours. <laughs> well, enjoy your movie, sir. And uh, hopefully you create a video on, on your channel about leadership lessons from 83. And uh, guys, I highly recommend go and check out Gordon's um, YouTube channel as well as his LinkedIn. There's some great content out there, great posts, and uh, we'll look out. Yeah, and, if, the, and, if, mm -hmm. and if you like, I will uh, provide an audio copy or a PDF version of my book Fast uh, that your listeners can, can take and download to, to read. Yes, please. That would be great. We'll share the link once we have it from you. We'll share the link in the in the description. So we're well. Thank you. We really appreciate that uh, that special gesture there. And uh, once again, thank you uh, for sharing your wisdom today freely. And I'm sure this is not the last conversation we have together. We will catch you soon because there's l lots more happening on the cricket front, on the <laughs> leadership front, so many other things happening. Once again, thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye.